All right, hello. Welcome to Adventures in Lollygagging. We are playing the One Ring Second Edition today. We are continuing our uh, our, our very young uh, One Ring campaign uh, that uh, deals with the northeastern area door. As we're eventually going to get into some Angmar stuff, uh, as we're in the early days of our campaign, where you know just the signs are happening. But eventually, I'm going to slaughter all of them with like you know various witch king disciples and things like that so it's gonna be fun and they don't even know it's coming because um they don't as long put it they don't know the lore uh i think that's what love said <laughs> anyway sorry inside joke uh so yeah let's uh let's see um we'll dive into the summary and everything shortly we'll do some character introductions but before we do all that let's talk about other things we do uh, on the channel because uh, we do stream as best we can three days a week, Mondays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Mondays, we alternate between Alien, uh, also from Free League, uh, like the One Ring Second Edition. Uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be playing some Alien on Monday. Uh, other Mondays, we play Ultraviolet Grasslands, which is also very fun. Uh, Fridays, we uh, do Delta Green Impossible Landscapes, which uh, we just concluded part three of our very lengthy campaign. Uh, and we are going to be starting up part four in January. So very excited uh, to be close to the end of that one. Uh, and then Saturdays for the foreseeable future, we're going to be doing one ring until, uh, such time as, uh, people tell us to stop, uh, or, uh, you know, we stop ourselves or I don't know, we're just gonna be playing this a lot. Uh, but we seem to like it so far. So, uh, yeah. Um, well, that's it for me. Like, oh yeah, that's it. That's, that's, that's fine. Let's just dive into characters so we can play more. Uh, let's see. Tell us <laughs> one Twitch channel. Yeah, to rule them all. Uh, let's see. Let's just go over characters. Tell us a little bit about your character. Uh, who are you? Uh, you know, go over the usual stuff, calling uh, your your culture, like what culture you picked, that kind of stuff. What do you think your character is like good at? That kind of thing. Uh, like, like how do you fit in the party? You've all been pl you've all been together for a little while now. All of you are attached in some way to Balin um of uh, of the hobbit fame um but uh but you so even though we only had one session you you all have been together longer than that so you know each other better than we probably know you as uh, as sort of the audience uh, so tell us you know something about yourself so uh Melissa tell us about Arineal so Arineal is the uh ranger of the party uh so uh, her calling is champion shadow path is curse of vengeance her fellowship focus is Gilly. Um, let's see. She <laughs> realized when we were doing our uh, council last week that uh, she's got like nothing when it comes to skills that are really good at sort of like communicating with people, like not real good at enhearten or persuade or riddle or song or any of those things. So she's creative. She's generally much better at like athletics and hunting and battle and explore and all of those rangery kinds of things um but last week was fun she got to give treats to uh some doggies and make some new acquaintances as i was corrected we're not yet friends with the dogs we're acquaintances with the dogs and yeah let's see where we go from there do you remember the dogs names hooper and quint do you remember that's from jaws okay okay just checking just checking okay you pass you pass for now uh, okay, uh, and then next we have uh, we have our dwarf friend. We have Floy. Uh, did you know that Floy is an actual character? By the way, you stole a real character's name. How? Well, it's an example you, name, so I you're guess a plagiarist. Sense. No, I'm just kidding. You're cool. No, I'm not kidding. It actually is a character name. Uh, but go ahead, Floy. Tell us about Floy. Yeah, I'm Floy. I'm an adult dwarf. I am a treasure hunter. My skills are in wielding my axe and taking lots of hits. Also pretty endurance, so pretty much a pack mule. And one of his favorite things is warm milk, fresh out of the teat, with a little dash of rum. I'm sorry, you you like warm <laughs> milk, fresh out of the teat, and a glass of rum. This is what you drink. Okay. Yeah. Words I did not expect to hear from long today. Uh <laughs> Like most of those in any sort of combination. Okay. Where'd you get that from? Where'd that idea pop into? Just it up. I have no idea. I like it. Yeah. 
No wonder you're so upset about this slaughtered livestock. It's taken away your favorite drink. <laughs> All these poor cows. And... Oh, no. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, you don't like malt beer, meat ripe off the bone. You like you like milk warm, warm and fresh from the tea. Okay. Uh, and then finally, we've got Gilly Kettlegrass. Tell us about our Hobbit character there, Ashley. I'm playing Gilly. Um, she is Bree Blood is her cultural blessing. So she's a Bree Hobbit. So she's not the normal from the Shire kind. Um... So I kind of get a pick. Well, I don't get a pick, but I mean, it's determined. Like I get a little bit of best of both worlds. Um, my specialty kind of is like being the voice of the party. Um, I give us an extra fellowship just by being in the group. Um, I'm good at in hearten. I have courtesy. I'm true hearted. I've got, you know, I'm just really earnest. Um, and sincere uh in in combat i didn't do super great yesterday or last time we played um but the enthusiasm was there but considering i'm more of like the brains of the party it it tracks like you know i think she just called you stupid arineal and floy are you gonna let this little hobbit uh, call you stupid. You guys are in the brains. Too. So yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. So you, okay. <laughs> I don't she's even right. Know what that means? <laughs> he, he drinks. He drinks warm milk straight from the tea, regardless of the dangers. My my wit score is six. So it's oh goodness. Solid. Oh man. Okay. I love uh, I love boy. Ashley is creepy. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll elaborate later, but that's pretty pretty standard. I also have longs. So I got Longs, which is, Long hates Twitter because Long never. I love it. Long never. Uh, whatever. Anyway, that's good. Uh, let's uh, so let's dive in. This is only episode two, so we're pretty pretty early on in our adventure. Uh, and uh, as you can tell by the title, we're eventually gonna get to Angmar. Um, so we are taking uh, our our entire story thus far has started uh, in and around Bree so we are in Bree land uh, we are not specifically in we didn't start specifically in the town of Bree we started in the village of Combe which is basically a neighbor to Bree uh, and uh, specifically we started at the uh, at the farm of uh, of Rosa Goodborough who happens to be a, another friend of your patron Valen and it appears that some kind of attack happened uh, and has been happening with greater uh, frequency of late where livestock were slaughtered uh, and also in, in a fairly brutal fashion uh, and you were tasked with uh, with looking into this uh, and seeing what, what's, what's exactly going on uh, throughout the course of your investigation uh, you've learned a few things you learned that likely you know ob- you know goblins orcs were responsible for this you found some evidence to suggest that um, there were like goblin arrows and things uh, and uh you also learn that there is a, a missing uh, woodcutter uh, by the name of Elise Briarcleave, uh, who who is no longer uh, no one's no one's seen her in a little bit of time. So there's a little bit of concern, um, and so you guys traveled off into the Chetwood, track, the, tracking this this band of of what appear to be goblins. Uh, in the process of doing so, you got into a little bit of fight as you you trekked eastward into the Midgewater Marshes. You can see it on our map there. Uh, that's where we're at now. Uh, you fought a troll, uh, which was pretty impressive, and uh, did really well, actually. Floyd took a couple hits and got dunked below the water, but nonetheless, uh, you guys you guys beat up that troll pretty good. Uh, and then you came across a uh, like a fallen a fallen tree hollow area where a man by the name that you learned eventually it was the name Hollis Oakstout, uh, and Hollis is a apparently a disgraced Bree warden. Uh, who was uh, was known for raising guard dogs, uh, and he had two of his dogs with him, uh, as as Melissa mentioned prior, Quentin Hooper, and we had a little council. You all managed to win him over a bit. He was very uh, very secretive, very shady. We didn't even want you to, to share his fire in the middle of the night, um, but he talked to you a bit. Uh, do you guys remember much of what you learned uh, when you talked to to Hollis Hoekstout? He was talking about how, like, just one time he looked the other way when something happened, and 
Um, Specifically for the bandits that he uh, like pointed us towards who made deals with the orcs. Yeah. 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 So there's a couple big things like uh, personally, he, he like like Melissa was saying, Hollis apparently made a mistake at some point. He, he did something. He kind of allied with some some folks on the road and was trying to help his mom out. And then he kind of got exiled. That's at least that's his version of events. Uh, and so he's kind of been stuck out here living a very hard, uh, hard life. Uh, but in the process of doing so, he's seen some things. Uh, one of the things he's noticed that there have been a, there's been a lot of activity. There's been a lot of like goblins and uh, and orc parties and things kind of moving uh, from the south northward. So there's been a lot of like migration or movement, small groups, parties, bands, etc. Especially of late, uh, Gilly mentioned the the bandits. He did, in fact, I think you learned that there was also possibly some kind of collaboration uh at one point he he mentioned seeing a group of men uh with this like this goblin this goblin raiding party uh and he mentioned that there are some bandits who have a tendency to to visit the forsaken end which is to the east uh about a day's ride from from Bree. um and what else what else? What else? What else? Oh, uh, did did you guys re- do you guys remember what he told you about the the leadership of the raiding group of this uh, this goblin raiders? Remember anything about that? Got a new flag that they're flying. That I like. To yeah, learn. yeah. There was some kind of really fat, ruthless orc that was leading the way, and like there was like a somebody, some Spy. scrawny little goblin type creature following him with uh, what almost like this this cruel mockery of like human heraldry. Uh, behind him with this kind of bluish bluish flag torn tattered flag with like a like a slash on it which may or may not correspond to those like stomach slashing that you saw uh but yeah that's that's what we learned so far so there's been activity coming from the south moving north into the weather hills through the midwater marshes and uh you guys slept the night uh camping out with uh, with our good friend Hollis Oakstout. So what do you say we start up? Um, we'll say morning comes. Uh, you all can, none of you got wounded last time. I don't, is that correct? I believe so. Okay, so since none of you got wounded, you can all move your, since you're doing a long rest here, prolonged rest and safety. So similar, you know, to like fifth edition rules or something like that, you get it, get your endurance back. So you can top that off. Uh, if you were wounded, I think it's it's based on your strength score, how much you get back. Uh, and yeah, on our character sheets, there are uh, there are buttons that you can click. Hopefully they, they work. <laughs> I don't know, actually. But yeah, morning comes. Remember. Yeah. Morning comes, and you all notice that Hollis has woken up early, uh, earlier than the three of you. Uh, and you can see that he seems to be frying up what looks like these small eggs. Uh, and he is kind of flicking what looks like this the last of this dried meat he has uh, towards his dogs. You you wake up, you see the dogs kind of give you kind of a, a look that doesn't suggest your friends, but at least they're not growling at you anymore. Uh, but they kind of look very warily in your direction. Hollis doesn't say anything when you wake up. He just kind of goes about his business. You look up at the sky. It's slightly overcast. might be rain today, or maybe it's just the swamp. Who knows? What do y'all want to do? Stretch and offer Hollis a good morning wish. Mm. Just kind of like wordless grunt. <clears throat> Uh, don't suppose you have enough for sharing. He looks at you, kind of, kind of like a almost incredulous look. I shared my my fire with you. I shared my knowledge with you. Now I got to share my food with you. Exactly, what are you sharing with me to make this an equitable arrangement? Oh, thank you, Aaron. Uh, it was just a joke. I was just, I, unless I pull out some jerky. Okay. And like the minute you pull out like like jerky, like dried meats, you see the dogs like kind of look up at the sudden sight of it. Gilly is not a morning person, so she's just kind of still like wrapped up in her bedroll, 
and she's just kind of like glaring at Floy and Irenial, <laughs> just like, do we really have to get up just yet? Barely past dawn. Yeah. I'll, and I'll take care of the food. I'll you can stay there till the food's done. Okay. And Irenial will ask if Hollis will share the fire to make makes a makes a nod. I can do it. And he just kind of scoots over a little bit. And he, you see he has his own little pots and pans and things that he carries with him. They're really crude, chipped here and there. Uh, but he nonetheless, you know, relents, give you some space. But he says, he says to you all, I uh, <clears throat> appreciate that you all uh, true your words. Now, funny business. But, uh, I've got things to do, places to see, people to converse with. I've got a lot of my plate, so to speak. So, me and Quentin Hooper will be moseying on along pretty soon, and I'll suggest you do the same. We're certainly not going to stay here. Uh, we could... We could share paths for a bit. You could help us find a lease, and maybe we could help you with your uh, goblin problem. It's not my goblin problem. Like it's everyone's goblin's problem to a degree. Which way are you all headed? I think we're headed more into the forest. Back into the Chetwood. <laughs> That's where our lease is, yeah. Well, I've got traps to check on, so I'm not headed that way. I wish you all good luck. Give at least my best if you find her. And, like, Gilly's just nodding, like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Arrhenia will try to set like a you know maybe and i'm not sure what would be a realistic time but you know maybe um five days time if we are successful in our search maybe we can cross paths cross paths with you i don't have a feeling that we run in the same circles but if you uh do Come across to uh, me or my dogs. You can share a fire. They sell none of the meats. You get the sense that, like, he's softened a bit towards you, but I think the three of you kind of know that, like, this is a probably about as much as he's willing to go. Like, he's, mm -hmm. he's lived, you know, in a, in a sort of as a recluse, as like a hermit for a while now that baby steps to kind of get him any further than this also he's still you know persona non grata mac and comb and brie and so until that is settled it's likely you won't encounter him too frequently unless you wander back out into the marshes again ernie will finish up food and um toss a couple scraps to hooper and quint and they snatch it up and they and they kind of look at you and it's a little tiny wag one of their tails Getting close. Um, but as you're, as everyone's kind of packing up, he does say, "If you, uh, <clears throat> if I could beg a favor, and when you, uh, when you return to town, if you could check in on me, Mum, make sure she's got what she needs, I would, uh, I would appreciate it. She's an older lady." And uh, doesn't have many years left. And with me gone, she doesn't quite have anyone. My father died years ago. So you can just maybe, maybe poke in, see how she's doing. And drop by. Where? Where can we find her? <laughs> Last I saw her, she was. She was in calm. Marge is a name. Marge Oak Stout. But yeah, 
She's a very curious person, so be careful how much you mention. She'll suss it out like... Like you wouldn't believe. Pestering me with questions. Very... Got a mind like a... Like a steel trap, that one. Much quicker than you might think for... And spry for an old lady. You haven't visited her in some time. I'm not allowed back in. Periodically. Some folks are still kind-ish to me. Carry a note. A little bit of coin. Some silver, something like that from me to her. At least did that sometimes. But, uh... They don't much care for me. Yeah, no more. Would I know, like, his mom being from Bree? Uh, sh why don't you roll a test to see if you, uh... If you know, uh, some sort of society test, whatever you got, and see if you would have cross paths with her. Uh, society, like what, like courtesy? Whatever you think, yeah, whatever, like whatever you think is your your kind of your best, uh, like social skill. Uh, so yeah, courtesy could be fine. Um, yeah, that probably makes it. the most sense. Yeah, yeah, rip some courtesy. Failure. Okay. Yeah. The name sounds familiar, like Oak Stout sounds familiar, um, but you you are specifically, I, I believe we said you're Bree, are you, are you Bree or Staddle? Because we said you weren't Combe. Um, so like, yeah, so like there's Bree, which is the big town, then there's Staddle, which is also like, almost like, again, a suburb of Bree, which is where a lot of hobbits are. Mm -hmm. um, Combe, there's some hobbits, but not a ton. And like Bree, there's, you know, it's a, it's the biggest of the, of the towns, so um but yeah, since you probably don't really move about comb all that frequently, um, you're probably not too familiar with it. But since you've you've lived here, you remember vaguely like the scandal of like a Bree Warden trial and like exile and all that kind of stuff. So this probably sounds familiar to you. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. All right. So at that point, he I'm packs up. Her, he packs up his things. And they depart, and they kind of go deeper into the marshes. Uh, as he says, he's got some traps he's got to take care of. Uh, and where do you all decide to go? Is Troll edible? I mean, you, like, you, just, a you just asked if you wanted to eat a sentient, sentient. It, no. speaking creature. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's I'm usually just... an evil need. I mean, act. for, like, for dogs. <laughs> for dogs. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't, don't think, think you'd feed would. human yeah. to them. So if, I just feel like if you don't feed human to something, you probably aren't okay, going to feed troll. That's, okay. That's good. Good point. Yeah. Good point. So we're going into <laughs> Chevy. Oh, what about it's closer? <laughs> we headed back. Is that little lodge or that cabin house? Uh, the Forsaken Inn. Uh, so the Forsaken Inn is about a day's, uh, day's ride east of Bree along the, the Great Eastern Road. Um, you all are already east of Bree since you're in the marshes. So, um, yeah, you're probably, you're like, if you head all the way back to the Chetwood, then you would be sort of further away. But then the same is true if you went to the inn, you'd be further away from the Chetwood. So, either way, like, you're kind of equidistant. I, either path is probably roughly the same amount of distance. Like, you can probably get back into the, the eastern edges of the Chetwood within a half a day. And you can probably get down towards the Forsaken Inn within probably about a half a day from where you're at. And if we're going after Elise, then going into the Chetwood is the direction that we think we would be going. Mm -hmm. And if you want to inquire more about the bandits and things, then you would you would go to the Forsaken Inn. Yeah, my vote would be let's track Elise first. Sure, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, that feels more urgent at this time. Okay. So you begin, uh, so you, you kind of pack up your things and you start heading east once more. Uh, Arineal, are you, uh, are you going to go ahead and do the, uh, the leading again? Uh, sure. Yeah, go ahead and run, roll some kind of, uh, what's going on with my sounds here? I should not have. <laughs> I had, like, cows and stuff going on in the background. That is not what I wanted. Uh, so, yeah, you, um... 
you can go ahead and roll a kind of uh, your tr not a travel test, uh, but you can roll some kind of like navigational skill to try to scout your way there and avoid dangers and things like that. All right, I'll do explore. Oh, that's not right. You're doing fine. It's just my p PDF just freaked out on me. That was not a good roll. That was a failure. Holy. That was not what I was looking for. I didn't want to do explore. I wanted to Your do wits hunting. Kind of suck. I forgot. I meant to do hunting. <laughs> okay. I would have failed anyway. So That's fine. All right. So you, you're kind of traveling for about an hour or two. You once again get lost, like even in the light of day, you just kind of get turned around. Uh, the sun's up, but then the clouds come. There's the overcast. It gets dark. It starts to rain. And it gets to the point where you really begin to uh, just to question whether <laughs> you know how to navigate through marshes. This is not probably your preferred terrain, so to speak. But. You do hear the sounds of like shouts and screams. Um, and by screams, I don't mean like screams of pain, like more like, like people yelling at one another or voices yelling um, in the distance and like caught up in some thickets here and there as the rain's kind of coming down, starting to come down in a, in a, in a steady drizzle. But you have trouble making out exactly what the voices are saying and where they're at. Uh, but you know that you are that currently where you're at. There's there's somebody else nearby, and you can't quite pinpoint exactly where they are. Um, gonna share that information with the rest of the group. Just listen out. Well, better find them before they find us. Don't know who it could be. All right, Floyd, how do you want to do that? Uh, stealth up at first. So okay. You can't find us, just in case. All right, go ahead. Roll that. Success. Great oh, wow. success. All right. So you, um, you start sneaking about, and you kind of carefully push yourself you look back and Arenial's kind of getting one of her, her her boots out of the mud as it's gotten caught uh and you you push yourself through this hole between these tangled tree branches and you look off and slightly to your west you see three orcs that are surrounding some carcass uh, on the ground uh, as far as you can tell they haven't noticed you Can I tell if they're going in a certain direction? It looks like they're they're not moving. They're they're literally surrounding a, like a carcass on the ground. Carcass, like the body of something. Hmm. And I can't tell what it is. Uh let's see. It's kind of it's. It depends on how close you want to get. Like at this point, you're keeping at a safe distance. You see them. The rain's kind of coming down. It's a little misty in here. There's like this yellow mist that's starting to kick around. Um, you can either roll like a scan test or you can kind of push your luck and try to get a little closer. Uh, and all that would do is basically I'd roll a check on my end to see if maybe they see you. Uh, or you can like roll like a scan. All right, I'll roll a scan. Go for it. And don't forget, you can always burn hope and all that kind mm. of stuff. So. I think I'm favorite in scan, so this might be helpful. All right. So favorite being you roll the two d12s, you take the higher. Okay. Great success. You see it? Yeah. Uh, you can see that they uh, seem to have killed a, a fairly large like boar, uh, and are currently in the process of carving it up. It's dark. It's 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 the sun's not like directly on them. They're kind of under this overcast of this crooked tree, like this kind of this hollow area. Um, and you would know, obviously, that they don't much care for the sun, or at least direct sunlight for the most part. Um, but it's kind of dark and overcast and rainy, and you can see they are, like, just just butchering with, like, these 
big old cleavers, like really cruelly just ripping these things apart. Uh, and every now and then, all right, I'll head back to the group. I'll let them know. There's a pack of orcs by head slashing up a boar. We can avoid them while they're busy. Let's avoid them and continue yeah. on our search. Okay. You want to avoid them? Yeah, you definitely could. With that stealth roll that you had and with your scan test, I would think, Floyd, you could easily kind of lead them, lead uh, lead the other two out and around. Um, okay. Uh, and so more than once you hear as you're passing by, keeping like kind of maybe veering more south along the, you know, along the, in the marshes, you kind of hear like fighting as they're like fighting over the meats here and there. So it's not so much like that's what likely the screams and the shouts were. Um. But eventually you get further enough away that you feel confident enough that like, you're likely out of earshot of them. A little, well, little while passes. You probably get to around midday, and you can feel the ground begin to sort of harden at this point. The clouds are still a little overcast, but the rain starts to cease, and you feel yourself moving onto harder ground. You see the taller trees of the, of the Chetwood uh, more closely packed, uh, no longer kind of the gnarled, wet lands of, of the marshes, and you feel like you've kind of pushed a, a significant boundary. Um, a rineal. So you're usually leading the way on this. So you're looking for, you're looking for this missing woodcutter. How do you want to go? All, how do you want to go about doing that? Um, I would say, I mean, mainly just looking for tracks is probably going to be the main thing that I'm trying to see if I can get any kind of a pass or anything. Okay. You know, like looking for, you know, something that might be dragged or just footsteps or tracks or anything. Okay. Uh, so you can do, yeah, roll like a, like a scan awareness hunt and, you know, whatever you feel like you're, you're specifically looking for is fine. Uh, success hunting 17 over 13. Yeah, so you backtrack a little bit uh, because you do remember that as you were traveling through the Chetwood, you did find kind of a split. You found there were like sets of tracks that kind of were overlapping on each other. One of them was, was looks like human boot prints and, and sort of paw prints that you thought might have been wargs, but turned out to be Hollis most likely and his, and his dogs. Mm -hmm. And you kind of work your way back a bit to that clearing in the forest where... where you, you saw the most amount of activity and you, you take the other path. It's been a day. There's been some rain. So some of that is a little bit more difficult um, for you to find, um, but it takes you north. So you're moving kind of further, further northward into the Chetwood as well. Um, the, the ground is getting more undulating. So here and there you're seeing like these outcroppings you pass by uh, like what looks like elevated trees on top of these small ridges and it's it's then you hear similar to back in the in the marshes you hear the sounds of of calls back and forth um, that you would be able to recognize now without the rain clogging your ears a bit it sort of sounds like goblins orcs kind of yelling at one another in the distance um, the tree cover is, is is enough to give some shade there's no real there's little patches here of direct sunlight but otherwise it's it's somewhat shaded but much like yourselves, it, it almost sounds like they're calling and responding. And you start hearing a voice here, like off to the east, shout off. And then somebody else kind of responds a little bit further north. And then another responds west. And you feel that like in this northern section of the forest, there are at least several scattered groups that could possibly be scouring the area as well. What do you want to do with that? Uh, so Irineal will be um, kind of excited by that a little bit um, and just say, like, there's a lot of activity here, which is really dangerous for us, but it seems like they're looking for something and haven't found it yet. So if they're looking for Elise, then it means that they haven't found her. So that gives us a chance that maybe we can beat them to her. Makes sense. They have a good chance of finding us as well, though. And they have a head start. So we're at a disadvantage, but at least hopefully this means she hasn't been taken yet. If you have her trail, keep leading the way. 
So this is what we're going to do. We're going to do a bit of a, we're going to do a skill endeavor. Uh, so skill endeavor, if you've, if you've played, you know, D and D, especially fourth edition skill challenge, it's basically the same thing. We did a council last time, which is effectively the same rules. Uh, it's just skill endeavors can apply to sort of any task, really roast councils or, or specifically a social interaction. Right. Uh, so, um, so we're going to basically treat this like you guys are all contributing to, you're trying to find a lease specifically. You're trying to find, or at least signs of this woman, mm -hmm. uh, but there is a time limit to this. So we'll just walk through this because we'll probably be using these, these fairly regularly. So I'm just going to walk you through the rules first time around. Uh, and so in the future, we won't use it much. But it's, again, it's very, very similar to the council stuff. So if you recall that. So basically, the first thing you do is I got to set like a resistance level, which is like the number that you have to hit to achieve your goal, right? And so there's basically three levels. There's three, six, and nine. So three is if it's simple, six if it's laborious, nine if it's daunting. Um, and then we set a time limit if there is one. So if there's like some time that you're working against, whether or not there's an issue, uh, and then we start doing our skill tests, right? And the question, you know, and then we can, uh, you can apply skills creatively. Sometimes there's limitations on which skills you might be able to use or whether you can repeat them. Uh, and sometimes it's just, it's just kind of open. Like, what are you doing to sort of contribute to this? Uh, so just to sort of establish the goal, uh, which I think we've already have done is you want to find a lease or signs of a lease, uh, preferably without being, you know, the getting, drawing the attention. Uh, of these of these various groups of, of orcs and goblins. Okay. Um, so I'm going to set this at a six, so m middle of the road, uh, but I'm going to keep the time limit fairly short on this one because they are also actively searching, it seems like. So you're going to need to get six successes, which is, again, the resistance, and the time limit, uh, which is the number of attempts you get. Uh, we're all set at um, at a short amount of time, which means it's just a matter of time before they find her, if she's even here or something mm -hmm. like that. And yeah, so that, that means that means the time limit is equal to the resistance level. If this were, if you guys had enough time, then it would be like resistance plus one. And if you had plenty of time, it would be resistance plus plus two. So in this case, it's just going to be equal. And so that's it. You have to you have to get six successes on this endeavor before you know on on six you have six chances mm -hmm. before kind of coming up on that now remember that you you roll the check right and if you pass you get those you you get the success but also if you get additional successes like if you increase the quality of your success you can gain extra uh, successes towards your towards your goal sound familiar Are we good to go mm -hmm. yeah. yep Okay, so just remember the the task here that we're, we're trying you're trying to do you're trying to find a missing woman in the that you believe is in the area without alerting these you know these other party. Now, it is possible that like your failure could be such that it could just delay you, it could cause a complication, and in some cases if the failure considering what you're trying to do is so bad, it could cause disaster, which might just you could just potentially fail the thing outright. And I would I would say that that is certainly a possibility. Like if a fail is so bad, it's possible that it would cause disaster, and we could like you know trigger combat or something like that with one of these parties. So keep that in mind. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, you guys are in the area. You've got tracks, but the tracks aren't clear any further. Like you've it's it's gotten to be like kind of some heavy you know heavy overgrowth so it's a lot harder to find what looks like you think they've started to spread out a bit which made it a little bit a little bit harder to track them when it was like a fairly large group maybe a dozen or a dozen and a half together you saw that there was like a ton of ground that was ripped up pretty easily to follow but now it seems like they're in maybe smaller groups smaller packs and they're moving with a little bit a little bit more stealth or a little bit more subtlety um so what do you all want to do I would say if Rhenia lost um, the footsteps that she was tracking, I think the first thing that she would want to do, um, and I'm thinking maybe athletics for this, is try to get higher ground and try to get a better view from up Okay. So basically climbing up a tree. We'll climb a tree and try to get a get a, yeah. a good vantage point. I think that sounds like a great idea. Uh, so you look around, and, and it's not just you're not just trying to climb a tree. You're trying to kind of climb a tree that's 
specifically going to give you that's not you know too cluttered or too obscured in some way you want to be able to still get a view of things you want to find that kind of right like that right tree or a high ridge or something like that because there are mm -hmm. these ridges from time to time uh all right uh go ahead and roll that athletics test all righty extraordinary success 18 holy crap 18. wow that's a hell of a start uh okay uh extraordinary is what two extra success icons or three two i think no i think she got three right it's three successes no i meant how many it's okay two sixes. she got two sixes she got two sixes. yeah two sixes, okay. three successes. you literally just cut the resistance in half with that here's what you see <laughs> everything <laughs> You see a group of six orcs that have that are like in like kind of separated into, into two groups of three that are moving about a ridge line uh, where there is a series of trees, and you notice that they are looking up in the trees. And while you you can't quite get a look at what's up there either, but you can tell that up ahead, they they you get the sense that they have are starting to hone in on something. And that's when your eyes, as you're scanning the tree lines of what they're as they're looking up, sometimes they're kind of firing a random arrow, a bird falls or something like that. They start shouting to one another. That's when you see a color in the trees that you're not used to seeing as you see what looks like this flash of yellow and you can see that there is a woman that is up in the trees much like you a little bit a little bit ahead of you a little ways ahead that you're not sure if she's alive she's just sort of flat and almost like on a large branch that kind of extending outwards as if she's just kind of flopped there unmoving uh, too far to tell whether she's breathing or not, even with extraordinary successes. Okay. So I will. Hey, Jen. Um, climb back down, um, and I'll you know just kind of quietly, just um, you know, kind of hand motion, let the rest of the party know that I have located her. Okay. Do you do you tell them about the fact that there are six orcs that are in the area as well that also seem to have a good sense on where she might be too yes i do you just keep that from them like screw <laughs> it. this is my chance Ignore to take floy out everything you heard. <laughs> it's all clear it's good everyone i need everybody else to take their their headsets off <laughs> and also just letting them know that like they seem to know that she's up their their eyes are up okay oh so we need a distraction of some kind that would help greatly yeah uh, hmm. How do we want to do that? Poorly, as far as I'm concerned, so that we can have something exciting happen. <laughs> no, thank you. No, no, clever is great. And uh, I would say either do like really well or do really poorly. Don't do average. That's not fun. <laughs> crit fails and crit successes are the two most fun things to do. Oh, Lord. Okay. Um,. Well, you got any ideas? You're the smart one coming up with something. <laughs> okay, Gilly smart, Ashley not so much. Um, let's see. I guess um, Gilly's gonna start heading off in a different direction. She probably doesn't exactly want to go alone, but if she has to, she does. Um, to like make a ruckus and maybe draw some attention off of her. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stealth towards a different direction. Oh, thank you, Stanley. We got a we got a we got let's see. Uh, I think that puts us okay. So our total, we had, I think we had two left over from last week, and then we just got one from Stanley. So we've got three of these uh, of we those. If you if earlier. Well, Aaron didn't it didn't specify yeah, that that was going to you. As far as that I'm concerned, that's three, three complications. complications. Oh, okay. uh, that and, six. Yeah, like, but no, like Melissa bailed him, you know, his his group out. So likely he's probably <laughs> he's probably helping you guys out. Uh, okay, so again, you've got we'll say you got three until Aaron chimes in otherwise, and we'll figure out something to do with them. 
Aw, thank you, Lucifer. Luf Lucifer's peach. Thanks, Kaylee. Kaylee. When are you going to play with us, Kaylee? So am okay. I going to roll stealth or no? Ah, it's for the fellowship. Okay. I'll remember that next week, Aaron. I'll remember that. <laughs> See what happens to Agent Stone. Uh okay legumes to the victor okay no one uh no one wants to see the heroes die apparently. oh we got a hype train that's thank what you we're very much for. all right I was like, uh and melissa's throwing an out emote. gift subs too okay okay you want to you want an emote okay. <laughs> <laughs> throwing bits at your own channel uh okay um yes stone is definitely a dead man all right all right all right all right so you've got You've got a you've you got a night. You know where she's at. You know what tree she's in. She's ways ahead. Uh, yeah. She is, however, she does have however of like six that uh, Reniel could see. She could see six orcs surrounding the area, firing up into the trees, looking for someone or something. Um, Gilly, you mentioned wanting to do some kind of distraction to lure some of them away. Uh, did you come up with something? Not necessarily, but like. Thank you, Skis X. The thought is maybe um, heading off in like a different direction to try and like make a, a ruckus and try and draw some attention off, and then hide. Okay. And then so you want GTFO. you want to move off in a different direction? You want to lure some away? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, oh, look at this! Uh, thank you, legumes of the victor. Look at that. A uh, couple a uh, couple of gift subs there. Y'all are very kind. You're very nice people. Um, all right, so tell me two things. Skill that okay. you want to use, and then let's flavor this stuff up. What does this look like? So tell me what skill you're looking to use here. Several rocks. <laughs> just get get like a potato shooter and just rapid fire like a bunch of rocks. Uh, what are you thinking, Gilly? What skill are you looking to try to use here? I'm thinking maybe like riddle. Like I'm trying to rapidly kind of just put stuff together to figure out just like off the top fly of my hat. Or I wanted to stealth away, but I don't that won't help me make a lot of noise later. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know if Riddle really makes would apply. You're not talking to them, so it seems little usually has to do with like it's a custom skill, right? So mm -hmm. not sure that really applies yeah. here. Um. Okay. Um, uh, you can keep now, thinking. If if like, long, if you have something, you can come yeah. up with it. If you have something, jump in, and then like we can come back to to Ash to all to Twitch not to be outdone. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, okay. I was thinking I'll just toss the door. I'll just stealth toss up the towards door. the towards the tree. Okay. okay you want to? You actually want to get up towards her? Yeah. Just all right. There's six orcs waiting for like a distraction. Okay. This is one of those situations, I'm going to warn you, is that this is one of those situations where if this goes poorly, this could result in a bad thing, like a very bad thing happening. Like they could notice you, this could bust into combat, and like we could, so I'm just letting you know that now. Like if you're, if you're going to be that bold to stealth and get to the tree, since they're all in the area that someone might, so if you fail, someone might be able to see you and do something about it. So keep that in mind. All right. Okay, That's fine. go for it. Roll it up. Let me burn some of this. It's these hope dies or bonus dies we've got. Uh, yeah, you want to burn one? Okay, so that's okay. You get one of those extra bonus die. Okay, so not an extraordinary success, but you get you do manage to sneak up. So basically, you guys watch as Floy disappears into like some some over you know kind of overgrowth, and then. You don't see him anymore. And then at the last second of Reniel's, maybe, I'm, I, I guess you climb back down from the tree. You kind of catch this one little tiny glint of his dwarven male, right? With the, a little bit of a stray ray of sun kind of coming through the tree line and like kind of reflecting off of his armor. And then it's gone again as he has snuck up and is currently like ducked down and hidden amongst this, this bush that is right underneath the tree where it looks like the woman, uh, presumably Elise, is is clinging to a branch. Okay. Gilly, have you come up with something yet? Okay. It's not the smartest idea I've had, but it's an idea. All right. Um 
so Gilly is was really stressed out about that troll that we encountered. So she's gonna wander off a ways and then she's gonna do her best to like best attempt at impersonating the troll. So like knocking stuff around, yelling. Like that's that's Gilly's idea. Okay. Um and I only have one point in it, but I think my best skill for this is song or <sighs> I don't okay. have any points, but also possibly awe. <laughs> okay. I think there's, so there's, I guess there's two things we could say. Awe would be like literally throwing stuff around and pushing things and, and making. I don't think I could, I, she's right. going to attempt, but. Song, I think would be more, you mimic the sounds of a troll uh, yeah. from a distance. So yeah. I think that makes more sense in this okay. situation. So I think song probably applies. Uh, okay. Um, I'm gonna need one of those dice, Jeff. Gotcha. I gotcha. Thank you. Um, I don't want to look. You guys are rolling <laughs> so ridiculously. So, well. Gilly gets off to a distance, right? And you guys just hear it's silence, and then you're, oh. As she starts stomping around, <laughs> just yelling. I'm convinced there's another troll dude by like another troll. <laughs> she gets like boy, the, boy runs away. <laughs> she gets like the biggest rock she can get. It's it's like fist size. She like throws it at a tree. It's oh. a tiny little rock that just yeah. bounces, <laughs> but it comes from like behind this big bush, and you just go rah, 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 like some crazy sound happening, and. Yeah, you hear the orcs just begin to sort of shout out to one another, and they're like kind of their black speech. They're, you know, the, and they're, uh, you see, they look confused. Um, and a few of them begin to trail off. You see, like they shout at one another, and like half of the group begins heading off in the direction that Gilly was making noise, leaving only kind of three loosely scattered about the area. Floyd, you, you're sure they haven't seen you yet. Um, there's the, the woman up the tree. You could potentially risk climbing up there right now. You think, uh, so you've, you've, you've successfully at this point, a found her and definitely reduced the number of, of goblins in the area by half, <laughs> which is pretty crazy. Uh, so the question is now, like, what do you want to do with the remaining ones that are here? And, you know, how do you want to get her down? Nice work, Gilly. You guys crushed that skill endeavor. <laughs> Should have made this laborious. Okay. Uh, how do you want to, how do you want to handle this? So, Floy, you're at the base of this tree. Um, this We're not, we're no longer in the endeavor of, like, finding her and, and clearing the, clearing the area. You've partially clear the area which is probably the best you can do currently and you found her so this is about as good of a situation as you could possibly have, have hoped for yeah can i see her from down here like she yeah you look up or? you look up and we'll roll it over especially since Arenial was able to kind of tell you where and you look up and you do it as the wind gusts through the branches of the trees you do see like what looks like a a tiny kind of yellow brown cloak just sort of flap a little bit here and there if you know, if it almost blends in with the tree bark, but you can see, um, but her arms are just limp. Doesn't look like she's moving at all. And if you want to roll a scan, yeah, go, go ahead and roll a scan. See if you can kind of determine anything more from there, but you see her. Yeah, you cannot, you can't tell anything more than like she's up there, but that's it. Then I might decide to go up there and see if I can help her now. Okay, roll athletics to climb. Athletics. I can burn hope just any time, right? You can burn hope at any point to get uh, an extra success die, an extra d6. If you think it taps into one of your distinctive features, you can be inspired, like you can become inspired and that would give you two uh, if you burn your hope. Uh, I don't think it taps my features, but I'll just get the hope for extra. Yeah, get the plus one. Yeah. And don't forget, we have 17. We have 17 rerolls. Of, not rerolls. We have 17. Maybe we'll do a thing where, like, you can 
You can burn one of them to get a D6, or you can burn five of them to roll it favored or something like that. I'll just get the extra yeah. D6. Favorite is basically D two D twelves. Yeah. Okay, go for it. So you just took the hope, or do you? Okay. Who's that? Okay, yeah. You climb up very quietly. Um, you you kind of wait for the goblin that keeps shooting a, like arrows <laughs> up into the trees, just picking off squirrels and 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 birds just because uh, as they're looking around, and you're like, and you hear one or once or twice, you hear like. Here, little lady, here, little lady, here, we're not going to hurt you. And you manage to climb up, scramble pretty quickly, and you get on this, this, this large branch, and you can see that she has a arrow sticking out of, like, the, her backside. Uh, it might be in her kidney or something like that area. Uh, and she is breathing, but is unconscious, um and is just sort of limply somehow she climbed up here and she managed to kind of wrap what looks like her belt around her leg and around like a little stump that comes up from the top of the branch to kind of keep her like seat belted into this this branch but then apparently at some point she lost consciousness um if you kind of look at the wound a little bit you can see that the skin has gotten black kind of infected uh you know from looking at the uh, the the livestock yesterday, that there was poison on some of these some of these arrows. Mm. How high was the climb? You would you know that if you dropped her, it's about twenty feet. So if you dropped oh. her, this would probably not go well for her. Okay. Um, Gilly, I would say you probably don't see this as you're kind of leading them away. Mm-hmm. Arineal, I would say you probably see like him climb up. Yeah, I would kind of. I'm gonna try to move closer because I'm assuming it's gonna be a two-person job to try to get her. Down. Okay. Floyd, Floyd, he's stealthed up. So why don't you go ahead and roll stealth up there for me as well? I don't want to roll stealth. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, get off the stream then. <laughs> That's so good for me. Um, can I, so can I spend six of them to have it favored and... And a die? Finish? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. We're down to 11 then. I like this idea. This is good. This is, gives us a way and to... fellowship yeah. it for the extra. Wait, no, that's yeah, you, you do have refreshed fellowship, by the way. So you are, you are at five fellowship. That's since it's the start of a, well, you actually get them at the end of the previous session, yeah. but you have five fellowship to spend. So, you can also save those, potentially regaining extra hope later on, too. So it's another thing that you can do with them. Uh, so go ahead, Arunil. I think I did that right. So extra D12, extra D6. Just choose best, since you're rolling favored, and then get your, your bonus die. Ooh. Oh, my gosh. Okay. How bad did I roll? Uh, Pretty, pretty bad. bad. <laughs> you rolled a four to two on your feet die. And a one, one, and a four on your success die. So your your best feat die was a four plus one plus one plus four equals ten, and you needed to hit an eighteen. Yeah, which is why I spent all of those to try to get so some extra stuff. Gosh darn it! You get within about ten feet of the tree that Floy is up. You're almost you almost snuck to that large that large overbrush where where Floy had had kind of kept himself prior to climbing up the tree when the classic step on a large like meaty stick and there's this loud snap that original it feels like it echoes throughout the trees in the forest to you right Mm -hmm. and that's when you see these this goblin with a with a bow just kind of whip over see you and just uh, and looks like they're getting ready to load their bow what do you want to do I mean, I guess I will ready myself. So, um, shield out, spear out, sword out. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I really like Czax. Very, very on uh, on message. Throw rocks. Just throw rocks. Okay. Um, okay. So we can we can dive into combat then. Sure. Uh, yeah. Let me set this up. Uh, since. Things have changed. <laughs> yeah, Skizak, bigger rocks. 
All right, so I'm gonna put everyone where they're at. So, so we're gonna put you way over there. I'll show you kind of an idea of what the battle map looks like. Uh, not that this was 100% going to happen, but uh, we'll say that. A little bit Could of good I stuff do happen, my a little bit of not so good stuff happen. Turn before we dip into combat. Yeah, sure. If there's something you want to do, go right ahead. What do you want to do? Um, so Gilly is racking her brain because she's got her scholar rhymes of lore. Um, so I want to dip into that and see if there's like a folklore that I know that goblins are scared of and try and like embody that. Like maybe there's a spirit that like haunts forests or um, something or no. I think you would, gen I mean, without having to roll, I think you, okay, well, go ahead and roll. But I don't know if you're gonna get that kind of that kind of thing. But go ahead and roll, yeah. Go ahead and roll and we'll see what see what you get. But they did start chasing after the troll. Uh, but go ahead and roll your 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 test if you want to do that. Or is it just like an auto thing that you're getting? Oh, that's just a it's a distinctive feature. So. Yeah, go ahead and roll. And if you want to burn your hope to get your you know your inspiration, you can see if you want to get some basically goblin knowledge is what you're going for here. Yeah. Oh, that's a failure. No, that's good. What are you talking about? Great success. Oh, I was reading yours. Whoops. Okay. So, so in terms of like, like spirituality and religion and goblins and stuff, that's probably not something that you 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 have any info on. But you do know that, like, the hierarchy of, of orcs basically is such that. You know, size and strength is is sort of the dominating factor. Like, if you're mm -hmm. bigger and stronger, you tend to be bigger and stronger. You also know that trolls are often used in larger bands and, like, war parties and stuff like that. Sometimes they're even sort of almost enslaved or like chained up and used as a tool more than like one of the one of the one of the band, right? So, mm -hmm. the idea of there being a a kind of troll on the loose could be a problem for them if it's you know if it's one of the ones that they're supposed to have or if there is like the hierarchy if there's like some larger you know orc that's in charge of them like their lieutenant or whatever um could potentially intimidate them them greatly so use that as as you will okay uh, but you have successfully lured lured them away. So this isn't like an issue of like you've you've lured three of them clearly away. They have they have started to head eastward and are hunting down this this troll of some kind <laughs> that apparently <laughs> is wandering through the forest. Should I okay? stealth away then? Uh no, I, I don't think so. Weave back to the party. No, you can weave back. I don't I'm I'm gonna say because you're using because yours was specifically for distraction, like you get that credit. You don't have to like okay. roll again to get the same thing and the same cool. effect. So you're you're cool on that. Uh all right, let me pull you on over and so you can kind of see can what we're come back and help me not die. To no, things. I think we should get like really early character death. I'm hundred percent on board with that. All right, so let's see how well that, now that looks terrible. Let me get that centered a little better. Now, when I say combat map, that's just, or battle map, that's just me being kind of colloquial with it. Like, but because this of how this worked, things are kind of spread out a little bit. So think about in these terms, you've got, right now you've got Floy up in the tree here next to this woman uh, who you presume is Elise, okay? You've got what, like all the way off to the east. You've got uh, Gilly, who's who's returning from leading three of them off, and then you've got these two, you know, other little goblins with bows, kind of here, and they're the ones along with what looks like a larger orc. Um, we're not going to get into the, <laughs> we're not going to get into the hierarchy of of orcs and goblins too much, but basically this one to the south here looks bigger looks like you know more muscular and stuff whereas these are a little bit more scrawny and they're and they have noticed you um so that's where we're at so let's dive into like our usual let's go back through our combat stuff again make sure we're kind of getting this right 
I'm going to say that in this case, because you kind of surprised them, but you did so in a way that's like not where you were surprising to ambush them, but you were trying to be sneaky that I'm going to wave surprise and ambush. No one's getting this. They're not going to get some kind of special. Um, however, I'll say, I'll say this, Floy, they haven't noticed you. Uh, it doesn't seem like. So if you wanted to do something, if you wanted to do something like kind of outside of like the combat structure that might change things up before this this really breaks down you can kind of go ahead and do that if you want um or you can kind of maintain your 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 hidden hidden status up here okay so it's up to you you tell me would you rather stay hidden up here or do you want to try to do something oh, yeah, I'm else stay hiding here okay because they're not nearby they're like a distance yeah there are so the way remember the way combat works is like you begin at a distance to where like there's an opening volley but the idea is always kind of like people kind of enclose on one another uh, to some degree. Right. Yeah, just hold position. Okay. So then uh, we'll do opening volleys. Uh, then we'll, we'll move into that. Uh, all combatants are entitled to at least one volley using a bow or a thrown weapon. Uh, so like a spear or a short spear. Um, so do you have one of those there, uh, Arineal? I have a sword. Okay. Do you not have a spear or anything that you might want to try to, to launch on an opening volley? Well, I already said what I readied, so I'm gonna. Don't worry about it. We're we're getting that. we're going through the the system, and so the system is opening volley. So if you have a spear, you get it. You get a chance to I use it here. Don't worry about like switching out weapons until we actually get into the close quarter okay. section. Thing. Okay. Yes, I do have a bow. Okay, so you can go ahead if you want. Uh, ping the one that you want to attack, and tell them, and then you can go ahead and roll a ranged attack. So I'm gonna do that one. Okay, one of the ones that's up on the ridge. Okay. Yeah. Eyeball. No. Got yeah, it. so the, the shot, you know, f flies completely wide, misses. Uh, those other two, because they don't see Floyd, because Floyd, you've maintained your, your hiddenness, and because technically... Gilly has kind of run off to the east and is only just now returning. They see just Arineal. And I think both of them are just going to take shots at Arineal uh, with their opening volley. Uh, so that's two shots. Do you want me to swap myself on the map with Gilly? No. Why would I want you to do that? Okay. Because I'm further east, not by far. You you were I thought you said you were sneaking up towards the towards the tree. Yeah. Okay. That's the tree. <laughs> Right yeah, there. I got it. Okay. Uh, all right. So, first attack with uh, against you. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot how the system works. I got to put everybody into combat. One sec. And then, let's see. Super ninja Gilly over here is just watching your friends die. All right. Let me try this again. So, first attack, first Ninja shot with the bow Ooh. is troll a great Gilly. success. Troll Gilly. Yeah, if you show up and you're actual troll. Uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a great success. Uh, I'll go ahead and make that a heavy blow because I do have an extra success. Um, so, you're going to take five points of damage uh, from that shot. No piercing blows. So you got to worry about injury. But take five points of damage. Take that off of your endurance there, Arineal. Uh, Floy, you're seeing this all happen. Gilly, you can see this as well. Uh, and then the second shot against uh, against uh, Arineal from the other one. Was I too far for opening volley? Uh, I would think so. Okay, yeah. Uh, unless, well, actually, do you have a bow or do you have yeah. like a sling? Have uh, a then bow. yeah, if you have a bow, then yeah, you can go ahead and do it. That's fine. Uh, just ping which one you want to target, and then you guys. The I think they made some updates to um, to changing stances and stuff, so hopefully we won't have any as, as many problems as last week. The Keeley suit. <laughs> um, all right, go ahead and roll. Great success. Oh, nice. Uh, okay, you want to do a heavy blow then on that one to yes, do two please. extra damage? Mm -hmm. So uh, what's your total damage? It does five total with the two extra. Five total, okay. Uh, all right, that 
is quite a bit, uh, but it is still up. Uh, it will go ahead and fire. Um, so it'll then I'll just go ahead and finish with its opening uh, opening attack. Another success, uh, also on Arineal. Uh Only a regular success. That's three more points of damage on Arineal. And then does this guy have anything? This other this other guy, this other orc has a spear. Uh, and I think he will do the same thing. He will target uh, poor Arineal with her spear. Uh, but will miss. And so the spear goes flying and comes, goes embedded into the trunk behind you. Uh, you. So that's the end of opening volleys. So now we dive into kind of stance selection at this point. Uh, you guys should be able to do it yourselves. Um, so we've done our opening volley. Now let's get into begin combat. All right, so uh, go ahead and change your stances um, to what you want to be in. Remember that there's forward, open, defensive, and rearward. Uh, this is even numbers. So since there's even numbers, you would know that um, I think you guys get to choose when it's equal or more more heroes and enemies. So you'll be able to choose your tart, like who you engage with as opposed to me. All right, so I think I've got Arineal and Floy at forward stance. Gilly, you're going to stay at rearward. Uh, so, with re so if the total number of enemies isn't more than twice the number of heroes in the party, yeah, you should be fine. So that's three versus three. You're good to go. Okay, so it's going to be Arineal's turn. Uh, Arineal, you've got these two that are up on, like, we'll, we'll go and say, like, this is, like, kind of target engagement. So you guys get to choose who you're who you're going to kind of engage with. So who would a Rineal kind of lock horns with here? Um, would you try to scramble up the ridge to get one of these archers that are on the ridge line, Or would you just charge at this meteor uh, orc that's down on the same level as you? Uh, I would like to... Um, I am bold. I'm going for the orc. Okay, so yeah, so right now we're just I'm just we're just kind of assigning target selections and stuff right now. Uh, so then Floy, same question. Um, so she's engaging with that one. So there's two others that are open. How would like which one of those would you want to try to engage with? Basically, uh, I was hoping they'd like come towards the tree, but if they do that at all, Cause are they yeah, not? they're gonna have to yeah they're gonna they're you're gonna see them kind of charge in at this point to some okay. degree because the way because remember that like target selection so when there's equal or more heroes than enemies and it's equal right now three versus three so players in a close combat stance gets to choose any unengaged adversary to face from eligible targets so you have three right. eligible targets so okay, you have to pick problem. or excuse me you have two because you only have the two that are on the ridge line okay all right so you're going for that one uh, and then Gilly, you're at ranged, so you don't necessarily have to do anything because you, as as a rearward, you can kind of choose mm -hmm. who you want to attack if, if if you attack. All right, so with Arineo, then we'll get into action resolution. You charge in. You can kind of move yourself towards that that orc soldier down there if you'd like. All right, and then uh, you're in. What would you like to do? What's your what's your action? Um, so I am bold, so that means that if I spend a hope, then that'll give me two extra. So You'll get two extra. Yeah, you're spending hope because you're inspired. So you're inspired because this is you're, you're doing a bold action. So you're inspired. Then you burn the hope, which gives you two extra d sixes on your roll here. You have a keen. Wait, so it's saying that I'm not selecting him. That's right. You, I got it. You got to target your... There you go. Yeah. You got it. I, hold on. I'm going to lose my character sheet. One second. Okay. So then I'm going to Keen Sword Sword. And so I get a hope. And I'm inspired. And you are inspired yeah. because you're doing something bold. And then you spend the hope. So like the order of operations. Are, but it's the same effective thing. Okay. Great success. 26. Great success. 20. What kind of weapon are you using? Uh, my Keen Sword Sword. 
So a short sword, you can do a heavy blow. Uh, you could do, um, let's see, let's check your feet. That already pierced for her then, right? Because she's yeah. the keen. Yep. yep. I think it would have pierced either way. It pierced it anyway. A 10 is a yeah. pierce. Yeah. So you can do, so basically what that means is I have to roll a, uh, uh, you know, my protection roll to see if you wound it. Uh, and what is the injury rating on your weapon? Uh, let me get back over there. It is a 16. All right, so I got to roll a 16. He does have two armor, so I'm rolling a d12 plus two d6s, and I need to hit a 16, or he is injured. Wow. Yeah. So you, like, he throws the spear at you, and you can see he kind of stumbles in the process as he's trying to reach and grab, like, a scimitar off his belt. You take that opportunity to close the distance, and it looks like you're about ready to just lower the sword straight down on the back of his neck. But the very last second, he's able to sort of reach his, like, half his scimitar up to just make the blow go sideways. You still manage to cleave off, like, parts of the skin of one of his arms, uh, but you're not quite able to get that this 100% to zero killing blow on his neck uh, but you still did a significant amount of damage uh, so what's the total damage on your uh, on your sword so the damage on my sword is three plus then... you could do because you had the extra success you could do an extra uh, two points for the hero uh, for the heavy blow right so I can spend a success to increase increase the target's endurance loss by any amount equal to my strength rating mm-hmm um, by N amount. You just what's your strength? Seven. Okay, so you get an extra seven damage on it. So mm -hmm. you've got your <laughs> Okay. So what's the grand total? Oh hey there, Pete, what's going on? So what's so the total damage from your from, from your sword? That and three Plus from the sword. So ten. Yeah, you nearly take his whole arm off, and you can see that there's this this huge you just kind of cut the top of its muscles off of its shoulder its bicep kind of cleave down into the arm and it's still functional but this this thing almost almost dies in one shot like you almost cut its head off and then the blow was so fierce that you almost knocked it to the ground and right now it's like oh, oh. um okay really nice uh really nice run i am bold <laughs> uh floy uh what do you want to do well, thanks for stopping in, Pete. Uh, I this uh, I really like this game. Uh, I can't wait to uh, to get into Angmar. So that's where they're eventually going to go. Uh, we have one Hobbit, but Ashley doesn't do a silly Hobbit voice. Uh, oh, I'm sorry that I didn't decide to do the crazy <laughs> Hobbit voice. Gotta do crazy. Hello, <laughs> hi, hi, Pete. Hello, how's it going? Hi, hi, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Floyd, your turn. You, uh, you're up in, you're up on a branch. So you can kind of imagine, like, see where I'm pinging that there is a branch that kind of overhangs this ridge. So if you wanted, you could, you could probably hop down and get to that one in a move if you wanted to do so. Oh, I was hoping just to jump out of the tree and come down swinging. That's Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. No, just, just kind of <laughs> leap and do that a hundred percent. Uh, I'll say uh, this is you're coming from you're kind of doing an ambush here. I'll give you a free bonus die on that. So like take an extra D6. You don't have to worry about anything else. So add that to it because you're doing this crazy uh, maneuver. I want to use the fellowship if possible. Do it to make it favored. Yeah. OK, so go ahead uh, and remember all of you have to track that. So you should be down to four now. That's the first use tonight, I think. OK, so you're. You're rolling favored, so you're taking the better of the two. Great success. Great success. Uh, so you leap down. Uh, what do you want to use your extra success for? I'll add it to heavy blows, extra damage. All right, so what's the total damage then you're giving to me? Well, that would be 14. <laughs> Describe how you... Using, are you using your great axe? Because you get plus one extra. Yeah. Oh, my God. I added it. <laughs> this... <laughs> this poor guy. So, hey, guys. Your strength is six, plus seven on the damage of the great axe, plus yeah. two 
plus another one, or excuse me, I'm sorry, plus another one. So seven plus seven, basically. So 14 points of damage. Yeah, mm-hmm. describe describe how you kill this guy as you do in one leap from this branch. Describe how yeah, this I, I pat on Elise. I'll be back with a lady. I just crawl towards the branch, start running with my axe out, come down, just swinging over my head onto this goblin. <laughs> Gilly, you have the best. Too, pretty much. Gilly, you have the best view of this as Arenal's got her back to to Floyd, like engaging this orc. Gilly, you just watch as like out of the out of the tree branch, out of the tree branches in the in the in sort of the vegetation because it's still summertime, so it's like green, you know, green leaves and stuff. You just see this bearded dwarf just and just leap down, and in one fell swoop, just carves through this goblin that was pulling its bow back, getting ready to fire on Arenal once more. He's my uh, fellowship focus, so like, in my head, I like to like catalog all the cool things he does. So just know <laughs> later in the evening, like before bed, you're gonna see Gilly just like writing down. Floyd was so cool today. He like leapt out of a tree. Killed That's him. how you guys know each other. You're like writing yeah. his. You're writing his biography. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm like <laughs> the biggest fangirl, but I try to be cool about it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, Gilly, it is your turn. Uh, you are in the rear where it stance. Uh, yes, so what sir. would you like to do? So I would like to shoot this guy. Uh, the one I shot previously. Sure. Yeah. Dang it. Um, but I have keen eyesight, so I would like to burn um, a hope to get inspired. So I keen eyesight? That. Yeah, I think that makes sense. As long as you're trying to, as long as like there's not you know, specific things obscuring the shot. I think it's reasonable to to apply that pretty much all the time. Whoops. Yeah. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to shoot him with my bows, and I am inspired. Oh, it's a failure. Okay. Uh, you take That's a shot, a and it kind of looks over in your direction as it now is aware of you. Uh, I kind of heard like going off in that direction. So it looks over towards and thinking it might be its allies returning and it sees this little hobbit woman pulling back and firing. And it's just firing. I'm not using my keen eyesight to like look at it. I'm just watching Floyd. (laughs) Just watching Floyd. Yeah. It's just like, wow. Like no look shot. (laughs) Just limply, limply comes down and cracks against the ridge line. Okay. All right. So let's see. Uh, this one's dead. Okay, so then that was Gilly. Family, All right. Journal entry number 41. I've never seen a dwarf drink milk like that. Okay. <laughs> From the tea. Gear cataloging all. It's just warm. Just warm. So, so, let's see. What do I want to do? This is going to hurt, okay. isn't it? Because he gets yeah, a plus possibly. one dice because um, pull forward. Uh, yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. He's very hurt, uh, actually, because he did a significant number of damage. It's a different amount of damage to him. Oops, that's the wrong number. Uh, so, yeah, he's going to arm, be- almost almost falling off of its shoulder. He kind of writes himself. <laughs> and he does, like, the classic just just growl and yell right in your face. You feel, like, the like little spits of, of some kind of meat fly out of the mouth and just kind of get on your face as the foul breath of this orc shouts at you. He's got this gross, black, and dirty helmet. Uh, and then he is going to try to do this sort of upward swing uh, with his scimitar at you. Uh, something special I can do. I do get a bonus die because of your... Uh, your stance so okay uh i need to hit a 17 that is a success that is a great success Uh, as i roll another d6 and so he's going to as you you kind of went all out to try to kill him and you thought you had him and that almost let you that almost meant you had to like overextend a little bit, get a little bit off balance, and he takes advantage of it this time as almost like a backhand upper uppercut with his uh, with his scimitar. You will take six points of damage. This is how uh, you this is hurting. How, yeah, how, how are, are you doing? Yeah. Thirteen. Down half. All oh. right. Um I would be close to death. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's a ranger of the north 
and you're a hobbit bookworm. So <laughs> a hobbit of Bree, okay? You're you're a hobbit bookworm. Okay. Uh, then the other one will go ahead, seeing its brother, uh, who they were just trying to put themselves through college, uh, <laughs> just get hacked down horrifically by this by this strange squirrel that leapt out of the tree. Uh, will uh, close in on you, uh, and will target you. Uh, Move that over. Okay, and uh, just pulls out this knife drop the the is this bow drops to the ground pulls out a knife and comes uh comes charging at you uh what stand you're in forward stance as well correct yeah all right so he he also uh let me undo that there we go okay so i get a bonus die for this uh and here we go let's roll it up wow i am rolling rocks guys Rolling rocks. Uh, two points of damage. It's not particularly great, but he does manage to find a way in between your your heavy dwarven mail and just gets a poke in there, kind of right in right underneath your your armpit. You just feel the pinch. Uh, that's like that's gonna leave a mark. Uh, let's get back to the top of the round as the other goblin archer is deceased. Arenial uh, and Floy and Gilly, set your stances and go from there. Uh, both of these do not look well. They both look nearly dead. Uh, yeah, the quicker you can take care of them, the less likely the others that Gilly was able to lure away uh, come back. Uh, if you can finish these quickly, you might be able to get Elise down and get the hell out of here before they do come back. Stay forward. Okay. Agreed. All right. Gilly, you good where you're at? Let she freeze. No, she's there. Oh. She's just oh, thinking. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I'll stay rearward. <laughs> okay. Uh, Arineal, uh, you want to go first here? Yeah, I'm going to spend a fellowship point, so that brings us down to three. Okay. So down to three, you're going to roll this uh, basically at advantage, so favored in this game. So you're really two feet die, taking the better. Uh, we still have 11, uh, 11 purchased um, rolls, uh, extra dice, if you want to burn into those from our yeah, beautifully and wonderfully nice well. people. All right, so we're down to 10. Okay, uh, roll it up. This guy is not looking good. Mm. Oh, describe, so. describe your kill. He does. Don't worry. You're, you've done plenty of damage. Describe your kill. So you I am, as I said in chat, like I kind of got this like meat stuff spit at me, and I'm just gonna like spit back, um, at him, um, mm -hmm. and basically where it lands, that's where I'm just gonna just shove my uh, keen sword sword. In. Okay. So you spit, and then like right in the throat, and just falls over onto the ground. Uh, Floy, can you finish it off? Yeah, I'll just come down swinging here. Okay. Any hit would do. I can't believe you just leapt from a tree in one shot a dude. Uh, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. That was so awesome. Just picturing Gimli flying off. Oh, oh no! Oh. Unfortunate. Oh no! Oh. Got too cocky. Got too cocky. And so you swing out, and he's like, <laughs> and it ducks super quickly. Uh, however, there's still Gilly. There's still hope. As Gilly, you see your your biographical subject uh, get stabbed right right in the side. Go to swing. The goblin ducks underneath the big heavy axe. Uh, you're shooting uh, into melee here. Uh, what do you want to do? You want to target uh, this one? Bonus die? Yeah, I'm targeting that one. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to spend a hope to get inspired and hopefully hit this time. Okay, I, go for it. Hopefully the stars are out of my eyes and I'm not as distracted by Floyd. <laughs> okay. 17 uh, success. Yeah. Uh, I got a ten, so that did pierce. It's it's nice. enough to kill it. It's yes. enough to kill it. It had it had two health, or it had three health left, and you did three damage on your on your basic hit. So describe nice. how this looks and include Floyd in the dance somehow. How did this look? <laughs> so wait, what did did Floyd just like miss? Yeah, I totally yeah, would. he just missed. It ducked underneath the heavy swing after so he stabbing. Whiffed, but mm -hmm. like his beard majestically just kind of like whips around him. 
And like, as the goblin is like, kind of looking below, looking up at him, just an arrow just goes right in his thigh and its face. And it just kind of lands on the ground, just looking up at Floyd. Yeah, it's as, like, as it's like deserves. reaching back to get ready to stab him. And, like, and then the arrow kind of comes into the eye <laughs> and falls down. Okay. Uh, well done, uh, as you all uh, manage to take uh, take care of them. Uh, you have a momentary reprieve. You got a couple minutes, you would imagine, before your your little troll distraction might lure the other ones back. Uh, so you have a little bit of time. Um, what's everybody doing in that time? I'll hurry until Irene will help me get at least out of the tree. We'll yeah. Her. Yeah. Uh, pull her down. Okay, so I mean, I'm not going to make you re-roll. You already rolled. The, both of you have already rolled successfully to climb trees. I'm not going to do it again. However, um, Arineal, as you as you pull your in the combat there, as you pull your blade out from the neck of this creature, you you notice that the handle gets caught up on some sort of some sort of necklace that you look at strangely it's got like beads and it almost just looks like this braided hair it creates this this necklace with these little uh look like pewter beads some kind of like dirty metal um that kind of keep them that kind of keep them wound uh here and there uh but it kind of catches your eye uh in, in some way and you also notice that like wrapped up and kind of mixed in there's like this little strip of like tattered blue cloth as well uh, tied in this strange affectation uh, that this large orc is wearing uh hey dead poet how's it going so i will take that okay you snatch it yeah no problem uh floy you floy you climb up you shove down a rineal you kind of limply as you're hurt as well start to climb up gilly you come running over i guess um but you managed to to lower this woman down gilly what are you doing um i'm probably gonna try and like because the orc is like the leader uh mm -hmm. probably try and like hide the body not oh, okay so much but maybe like bring brush over and just make it not as immediately noticeable okay uh why don't you roll a test with that see how well you hide them that actually might help uh, a little bit later on. So um, stealth, Elf? I think, probably makes the most sense. Cool. You still have nine of these uh, audience purchase yeah, I would like bonus one, dice. Please. You got it. That okay. is a super fail. So you That's think you've done a great job, like a wonderful job. You've you've like slid this this orc I'm underneath just this at heavy Floyd bush. The whole time. <laughs> and then and like what we like if this was if this was like a movie the camera would pan to the fact that like it's two feet are kind of just like sticking out the other <laughs> side of the bush like you're like you shove it in like shoulder like from the shoulder side and like you cover up the head the shoulders but you don't realize that the the body was so big that the feet come out the other side yeah. and it won't be very difficult but you feel really good about it you feel very very proud of yourself um okay Arineo and floyd you slowly lower this woman down and you hear as you do you hear as she kind of starts to stir a little bit, her eyes flutter open, and then they kind of, kind of go down again. But you can tell that she's she's in some she's in very rough shape. Uh, she's likely been wounded for. Yeah, what do you have? Uh, what kind of skill are you looking to to roll here? Uh, like a healing to see like if there's anything that I can do to help her. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to remember so yeah healing survival skill sure yeah go ahead and roll go ahead and roll healing uh i'll add one of our bonus okay down to seven she got <laughs> barely uh yeah you can tell she's poisoned the 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 shot itself was bad enough and it's probably been in there you think that like looking at the the wound site likely she's been she's been hit for you know th this happened within the last few hours so you don't think that she was like shot like yesterday and has been wounded all night she likely maybe she was hiding or something like that throughout the night 
but it's been a couple hours where she has probably been being harassed by them. Um, but you're pretty confident that you would need some kind of counter agent to, to counteract the poison. Um, you could yank the, the, that out right now and, and sort of stamp it down and that might slow the spread of the poison, but it's already in her. And so you would need likely some kind of collection of herbs to, uh, to counteract it. I think I'll try to just do the, like, leave it in, wrap it. Okay. Just break the long end of it off. Okay. You just like, kind of just, like, snap the shaft off, and so yeah. there's just a yeah. little bit there, and so a... it's not getting in the way. Can we do a craft roll to try and make a polstice? I think what we would probably do is let's see if you can find what you need in the forest first. So we'll cool. do, like, okay. find that and then the craft roll maybe or something like that. It'll be, like, a mini little endeavor sort of. Um. But for now, like you're trying to, to sort of hustle, get her down. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta okay. go. All right. Um, and because of how well that you did on your crazy troll roll, uh, you can, you guys managed to, to, to sort of get her off. You move. So who's carrying her? Oh, I can carry her. All right, you're gonna carry. No problem. Um, yeah, you start moving off. Uh, where are you gonna head? Head back into town, right? Yeah, you wanna, probably okay. just... Go You're going to head back to Combe? Yeah. Okay. So you start heading south, uh, keeping a decent pace. Flo, you're, you're stout and you're strong, but you're carrying a woman, you would guess maybe like in her 50s, human human age. You know, she's older. You can tell streaks of kind of gray in the in her hair, but she looks tough. You know, it looks like she's she's been working these, these woods for probably her whole life, you know? And... Um, when you get a decent enough distance away, Ereniel, you realize it's probably time to kind of scour the area, see if you can find something like on the on the forest floor that might help with with some of this mm-hmm. problem. So, if you want, uh, someone can roll. Um, I would say scan awareness, survival, maybe. Oh, no, survival's the skill category. Yeah, I would say awareness scan, maybe. I'm not so good at scan. I'm decent with awareness. Uh, I have two in scan, but I'm favored in awareness, and I have two in awareness. Okay, so why don't you roll to see, uh, roll roll for awareness to see if you can, uh, as it's more like maybe on your way, you're just kind of keeping an eye out. It's not so much looking for it um, specifically, but like as you're traveling back to town. Can you slash a die? I'm going to use one from the pool. Great success. Nice. Sure. Yeah, you absolutely managed to, to. I don't know all the names off the top of my head, but you find something. Yeah. Um, King's foil, uh, and you managed to to get <laughs> a little bit of that together, um, and then you do your best to kind of poultice it down. You said you wanted to roll craft as well. I was I was thinking like to try and roll craft to create a poultice. Absolutely, go for it. Oops. Okay. Yeah, I just you kind of uh mash them into a mush. You're doing it like while you're walking. And so like you you because you had a great success, you had like you, you found like a nice big chunk of, of kind of king's fall at the, the base of you know one of these areas. And but as you're going, you're trying to hustle and run, keep it up keeping up with Floyd, who's literally carrying the woman uh mm-hmm. while this is doing it, a Rennial kind of scouting for danger, leading the way, trying to get back, making sure you're not gonna get ambushed, and you're just kind of bumbling at your books, you've got your you know, your pestle, you're trying <laughs> you know, and like you just kind of stumble and drop and it spills and you kinda of have to start all over again. Uh so you can get like one more shot at this, uh, since you got a great success before, we'll say you have like two like two uh amount for like two attempts can i say. so sh- gilly is my fellowship focus so can mm-hmm. i support her yeah absolutely In which case, uh then- yeah todd moon where we are using foundry yeah this is uh it's still like this is still kind of an alpha or a beta i can't remember what the creator is calling it whether it's alpha or beta it's sort of a a port from the original like one ring first edition but it's actually pretty functional all the character sheets are functional uh, a lot of things are, are they work pretty well so uh, makes things a lot easier so if she's doing that, what does that, what do I click on my end for her assistance? I just completely brain farted and blanked on what support gives you. Let me look it up really quick. I think it's I totally just an forgot. extra dice, but just an extra it's your fellowship focus, it's two. She gets two. Yeah, that sounds right. And she's your focus. So take two D6s. Okay. 
Okay, so I would just do the hook oh, point wait. bonus die. Do I have die to have the thing? Bonus die? Just, just do it. It's fine. Thing. Okay. That's fine. Just, just do it. There's, there's plenty of like. Okay. Great All right. Success. So yeah, you're able to with, uh, with some help from Reniel, who's like kind of starts to to slow down. You know, it would make sense that you would have some knowledge of this. You were doing the healing roll to begin with, and so you're kind of getting her to calm down. You're slowing the pace even, maybe, so you're not moving as quickly so that she actually has time. And you kind of mash this together. You create a small pulse disc, and that's when you you realize it's time to you know, yank the blade out. And you hear, Rah! as you do, and you, you put... And I just pack it in. Yeah, you just pack down, you know, the like a... a like this pulses over top of a cloth and you just kind of grind it down in there to keep the bleeding from going and also try to do something to counteract that poison. You're confident if, as long as she gets to, you know, gets to rest, can clean it out properly, she'll probably be okay. Um, let me just roll the thing. Uh, Floy, do me a favor, roll a travel test. I can do that. Oh no, I got eyeball. Yeah, you, uh, you're going to take some some sort of fatigue here a bit as you as you're carrying this woman all the way back. Uh, and Arineal, you lead the way, and you don't as, as the closer and closer you get, the more comfortable you feel. Like you you can start seeing signs of the various like lodges and like these woodcutter huts here and there where uh, like, people have established their kind of their logging grounds. Um, and eventually, you do make it back, and you can see the edge of some of the the farms of. Uh, of the Combe villages, and you realize you've you've made it back to Combe at this point. Okay. So, so to probably take her straight to like someone that can help continue to heal and get her. Yeah, is she is she conscious or is she conscious? She's out? in and out of consciousness. You know, she's kind of popping in. She's still breathing. She definitely seems to be doing better. Uh, the last like hour of travel, uh, as you as you when reach she's back, more lucid. Um, Gilly would probably ask her, uh, who, who's the heal healer in Comb in your village? It's kind of... <sighs> Alcott. Go to Alcott. <sighs> Alcott. Okay. Sweet Root. Sweet Root, okay. And she kind of looks around, her eyes kind of peering with like one of them still shut. You can see some pain. And she tries to hold up an arm and point and just winces as she does so um but uh yeah she points towards one of the neighbors of uh of rosa goodborough um not the one that floyd tried to talk to but the other one okay yeah then we'll make a, a beeline once we get there to yeah Alcott. it's like mid-afternoon sun's still up but you can see it starting to descend on the western horizon so it's it's been a, kind of almost a full day's travel from out of the marshes, avoiding some of those, going through the Chetwood, now getting back to here. But you knock on the door really fast, and you can see that the you know, door opens up. It's a man. Uh, Floyd, you would recognize him, actually. Uh, kind of dark-haired man. He got a pipe. He was kind of watching the events yesterday as you were surveying the deaths of all the livestock. Uh, you didn't go and talk with him. You went and spoke with the, the Hobbit instead. But he kind of looks at you all, and he looks down at his eyes open up wide. He just pulls his pipe out. He's like, Alcott, get your bags. We've got ourselves a problem. Come on, in with her. In with her quick. I'll rush in. So you can rush in. They move a few things around. They find like a cot. They kind of sweep some things around. They You lay uh, Elise down on the uh, on the cot. You see another woman. They're, these, these people are probably middle-aged. Um, you look around, you don't see like any any children in the area. You think they're, they might have maybe been grown, possibly. Um, but this woman comes in, her hair kind of all up in a tangled bun. Uh, sort of, you can see the around the temples starting to lighten here and there, a couple streaks of gray and otherwise like brown hair. And she settles in. She's got what looks like a bag uh, and she just just to peel away and she's like oh and then as she's examining your work there's like equal measure of like grimace but also ooh, like surprise like an approval as she's kind of vacillating between the two um but she seems to get to kind of get to work uh what are you guys doing in the meantime uh gilly is like nervously standing there like ah 
do you need me to go get more for another post poultice or uh, no, 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 towels? Don't. No, that's okay. That's that's okay, sweetie. Just, just, I've got plenty. It's fine. Just sit down. Tell us what happened. Uh, just uh, explain. Was it? Uh, oh God, this wound. Do you, what made this wound? Uh, and Gilly will explain that it was like a goblin arrow. <laughs> Like she, has, you can you can see her like suck the air in between her teeth, and kind of whistle a bit. Oh, yeah, that would explain some things. And she starts, uh, hand me those scissors. And she like points over, like there's like these big like metal shears, uh, yep. right there. Okay. And then she just starts cutting away at like this dead, like blackened skin around the wound. And each time she does it, you can see Elise like, uh, like rotate. You know. Meanwhile, the the man's got like like some wooden pieces, putting it right down in her teeth as she's, you know, gritting down from the pain of just kind of tearing around these wounds here and there. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so, Reniel is going to uh, chat with, uh, I think it was Graham. Yeah, Graham is the guy. So he kind of comes up and he's he's towards the head of uh, of the of the cot. He's got the. Uh, he put like what looks like either a piece of wood or like a strap of leather in the mouth of Elise, and she's conscious now fully, uh, and she's just biting down in pain. Uh, you can see that she's got this scar down the side of her face, but it looks old, and her eyes are kind of twitchy because of it. But uh, they're really wide right now, as uh, as Alcott seems to go through it. But yeah, you move up to Graham, and he's just uh, kind of there, making sure. Uh, good, good sir. You're 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 very busy, but would 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 you mind? too much do you have somewhere that i could just take a, a just take a quick rest i took a bit of a tussle out there i could just use a break i don't want to bother you too much you're, you're, kind of you're busy looks you up and down he looks over towards his wife who is tending to elise and she uh, and she speaks up at that point in the back room with you right down the hall so, clean up after place. yourself though Yes, we'll we'll do. And remembering that she sort of had the bits of like spit at her. Yeah, you look pretty gruesome. You all look pretty gruesome. You spent the night in a swamp, so mm -hmm. and then you fought a bunch of orcs today and traveled through the woods. You look terrible, and you smell just awful. Okay. Um. So some time passes, but eventually, uh, the woman does seem to be to be healed. Are you just gonna do a, like a short rest right now, Arvinil? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. To put so, it in chat. I got a seven endurance back. Okay. Fair enough. So you do a short rest. Hour passes, maybe two. Um, at a certain point, Graham steps away, offers Floyd and Gilly, if you're if you're lingering, and offers you you know something to drink, something to eat. It's kind of going through the politeness. Isn't the most talkative chap in the world. Um, you hear like the grimacing of Elise and stuff, and stitching begins and everything. But at a certain point, after an hour or two. Uh, you see Alcott step up, kind of wipe her hands down on what looks like an apron, and it's kind of bloody, and there's black, uh, kind of like this, this black tinge to some things, likely from some of the poison that was getting se seeped out. And she says, well, that made the afternoon quite interesting. And you look out, and like the sun is now down at this point. So you want to tell us uh, what exactly happened to our, our friend Miss Briar Cleef? Yeah, we're, we're lucky to have found her for the goblins, dude. Well, it's true enough, true enough. Goblins, I suspect uh, they're the ones who also took care of our, our goats. Shape? Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. One and the same. likely the same, yes. There's a, quite a large group of them. What would you say, Jeff, it's a large group up at the hills? You or saw six. Really saw six all, all you did i mean you saw six arenial you maybe saw a few more uh scattered about here or there uh um, the way hollis made it sound there will there was a lot and they were amassing and they were organized strangely and they were allying with men and stuff like that but um you all specifically only saw somewhere between probably like you know six and maybe 20. okay so sh that's why she'll be like there's quite a Quite a few out there uh and and she goes on about how there were six trying to get her in the tree and how she you know 
pretended to be a troll to get three of them at least out of there. <laughs> when you say that, your tiny little, you pretended to be a troll. And I believed it. Yeah. You she, know, did, I... she did quite well, actually. I she don't was... doubt it. I don't <laughs> doubt it. Saved our hides. They must be the dumbest uh, creatures alive for that they little thing to be confused for a troll. They just heard me. Ah, oh, I gotcha. Like yeah. a bit of, uh, you know, kind of ventriloquy like... or something. Yes, yes, exactly. Oh, I gotcha. I understand. Okay. Well, I appreciate you, uh, you bringing her here and appreciate uh, what you've done. Uh, have you cleared the forest of them? Uh, Should we not... be concerned? Absolutely, you should be concerned. We didn't even come close to clearing the forest. I say. Well, it sounds like we've got ourselves a problem. We here in Calm aren't particularly uh, equipped for handling such things. Wow. So are you to evacuate debris because large numbers could be coming? She looks ridiculously offended. And like, <laughs> how like elbows him? Dare you, sir? Evacuate to Bree. I'll have you know. There might be wardens there, but doesn't mean they know. You know, one side of a sword from the other. I. Why should we start running and hiding between there, between their legs, when they can't come out here and do their jobs? We definitely could do more surveillance just to continue to observe how serious the situation is. Oh, and at some point, on. Floyd's right. It, it may become necessary to, to join forces if this continues as it seems. If it gets worse. Join forces means something else entirely than running and hiding uh, within them walls, abandoning the homes that we spent generations building up. What's wrong with you? You're deft. Those goblins aren't going to overrun the village. There's too many of us here. We might not be warriors and stuff, but we're big enough. We've got enough There's numbers that... One, it wasn't just goblins. There were, uh, was an orc leading them. The same and thing. Orcs and goblins. Okay, okay. Basically okay. the same thing. So, yeah. uh, but they do seem organized, we've heard. More so than normal. What was this supposed to mean? Organized. This one, you just said they they couldn't, they mistook you for a trout. But now you're saying they're organized and they're smart and they're cut. Which one Maria is it now? will pull out the necklace. Okay. Um, Floyd. Yeah, you take a look at that. Uh, that is, you're certain of it and you probably... Maybe even I kind of recoil as you look at it in Arineal's hand. That looks like a braid of some kind of like dwarven beard hair. You said that was on the orc. Uh, yeah, you you were fighting the goblins when I finished off the orc, and, and this was around its neck. I'll grab it from her. This is dwarven hair. What are they doing with this? I would have, like, no idea what even it's for. Um, Where are you from? Did we ever kind of settle in on, like, where you're from? Yeah, I'm up, like, up in the hills. I forget which ones. Are you doing, like, blue, like Arid, the Arid Luin, the Blue Mountains to the west? Is that where we kind of... Yeah. Okay, yeah, because, like, that's that's what's on the map. Um, You could also say you're, like, you know, part of, you know, King Dane, Erebor area, which is on the other side of the mountains to the east. Yeah. Um, but on the map, it would be, yeah, it would be the Arid Luin, Blue Mountain. Right. Those who didn't. The one from Blue yeah. Yeah. Those who didn't go and like resettle Erebor after, um, after Smog was killed at the end of the Hobbit. Um, yeah. I don't think. Yeah. I don't think you would know then uh, anything in particular about this. Like you, but you can tell. I mean, you, you can, you know, a dwarven braided beard. Like you can see it. Like you can see it on sight. Like it's clear why. You're probably not sure. That's way too happy music for what's going on right now. Uh, but uh, but yeah, you're uh, you're fairly confident um, 
what their motivation likely they killed a dwarf and they they, they took their they took the the, the beard hair mm-hmm. for reasons yeah it's definitely looking dangerous they've got squads they're communicating working together it's nothing like we ever seen well that sounds you're making it sound like it's all a mess load of trouble now but we've got great big heroes like yourselves to protect us don't we now and there's some sarcasm there but and it's at this point that you hear kind of like a coughing and uh you look over and you see like in the cot like elise is stirring finally is she well enough to talk that's for her to say lace you well enough to talk and you just hear i'm pretty fine thank you very much She's kind of grimacing as she talks, but... You're the ones who got me out of that tree. Aye, that'd be us. Many thanks. Many thanks. Oh, goodness. Oh, that's going to leave a mark, I think. Another one for the... For the record books. So, don't much know yet. As she kind of gets up and starts waddling over, kind of extends a hand and thank you. Name's Floyd. Floyd, thank you. Thank you very much. Carrie and me, my hero, an officer and a gentleman, just bringing me back home. Ugh. And uh, she sits down and she says, uh, kind of de- almost defending you guys uh, to a degree, like, you know, they've got the road of it. There's a problem brewing. I've got, it's a little bit worse than they even, uh, they even think. It's not just orcs. But we've got ourselves some sort of sort of strangest of things. Like it was not uh, maybe yesterday and last not what day is today? Kind of walks through trying to figure out how long she's been out. Uh, but she seems to like kind of tag it to like not last night, but the sort of the the night before the the events that kind of led you to the farm. And yeah, she just starts saying, "Yeah, they." Uh, I saw a very kind of peculiar, but the uh, them orcs were working with a bunch of these uh, well men. I saw them. I did. I was by me uh, by me lodge out in the woods. I heard just a commotion. I went a peeking, and. Uh, if I didn't see it, they were well, there were quite a few. It was a argument they were having, they're yelling at one another, and but they weren't fighting each other, you know, like animosity and whatnot. But like, very strange. It was dark, but the these men they had they had torches. I could see them, but they didn't look like no folk from around here. They were big, burly, hell different and such. I followed them for a bit, you know, through the nights, and I saw them find themselves a stream, and they started to clean themselves up, stripped down out of their clothes, and and they started putting on the basic village browns. I mean, they don't look like anybody around here. No one around these parts. They definitely stick out like a sore thumb otherwise. And then the Goblins went off in one direction, and they went off to another. That's when I kind of got caught up in a bit of the bit of the tussle as a few goblins found me, and then it was just running for me life for a few hours. What do you make of that? It's a bad omen for what's to come. If all these groups are working together, what what were they wearing before they changed clothes? Have they been in battle together? They had on, like, you know, war leathers and things. Strange swords and axes. Nothing like we've got around here. Yeah, they look, um, they look sturdy in a way, our folk are, you know? And, uh, I, I reckon they're not from around here, that's for sure. They have butcher hooks and things. Goblins did. They certainly did. 
cleavers, hooks, curved swords, things like that. That explains the damage that we saw on the livestock. Maybe, maybe. But doesn't quite explain why they just... Ain't no one around here. I don't care for many of folk and, and prey. And there's folks up in our shit where they can be a little prickly too, but uh, there's no way they would... They would ally themselves with some of those orcish folk. No way. They ain't wait. You know, you've got all problems, that's for sure. And you can, like, just hear, like, the, the, the sweet roots just like, <laughs> like that here and there, like when she mentions problems. You've got all problems. You know, a little bit of saltiness here and there. You know, some indignation. But, uh, no. Outright hostility like that, that's just not our way. No way. Wherever uh, they're from, it ain't here, that's for sure. But they were making themselves up to look like they're from here. Gilly's gonna pipe up and be like, We heard a rumor about the bandits that hang out at the Forsaken Inn. Uh, that they were making deals with, with the orcs. You you hear like the Al like the Alcots are just like like Alcot the sweet roots I should say excuse me they're just like you mention the f who goes to that rebel oh god and she's and so Elise kind of just shushes them like oh quiet down you oh, goodness but she seems to be made of some sturdier stock but she says um right heard a rumor and she just kind of looks at you ah uh, and... um from that friend of yours in the marsh. And Gilly like her like eyes, her, her. yeah, her yeah. eyes get a little big. Like you could see some red comes into her face at that point, and then the sweet girl's like, "What friend do you have in the marsh?" No, I, I don't know even, who they're marsh. talking about. No, no, we we, we were. You uh, mean Hollis? Have you been talking to Hollis? He's, she's been talking to Hollis at this point, and they're kind of going back and forth. <gasps> You know, supposed that what's wrong with you? He's ju he's just untidy. Yes, he's a he's a bad fella, bad egg. What are you doing? Oh, shush, shush, shush now. God, he's got the right of it. They uh, there's several unsavory folk at the inn. Not that I frequent it, mind, but I'm not. You know, I'm not so naive to think that those sorts of folks don't linger around the area like these two seem to think. But um, it's possible. So Hollis in, would like, know better. More than likely, he's been there. Yeah. Gilly's got her little notebook out, and she's like, okay, yeah, this is on our to-do list. Um, yeah, the sun's, like, completely down at this point. You guys are, like, they're feeding you now. Like, like there's, like, the fire is, like, kind of kicking in at this point. Like, you hear, like, the crackling of, like, this campfire near... Yeah, not the campfire, this, uh, this fireplace. And as, like, this sort of the story, kind of, like, kind of she gives you some backstory, like, the Forsaken Inn and then this and that. But mm -hmm. go ahead. What were you going to say, Gilly? That, that was... She just wanted to make the connection, like, okay, yeah, there are bandits at the Forsaken Inn. This isn't, like, some, some excuse Hollis gave us to get us out of the way. No. Oh. You head about, head take the road east out of Bree, about a day's ride. Look to the side of the road, you'll see a, well, it basically looks like a wooden shack, like someone for, built years ago and forgot about. But if you look closely, you'll see people coming and going. Not decent folk like us in this room. And she kind of like looks at Floy, who's got like just blood and grease. Like, Most of us in this room... <laughs> But, uh, but there'll be folk in there, sure. Is, is there someone in particular that we could maybe reach out to there? Oh, like I said, I don't frequent it, I but have asked. Yeah, you should have asked, I would Hollis, if, he, if you were talking to him, it means, uh, he's not the most trustworthy fellow in the world, as you might he expect. He's had a hard, hard life. Bit unfair, if you ask me. And they're like, it was not unfair. Well, he did. Enough. Enough already. But uh, now I know you can speak. The proprietor, a fellow named Jack, 
I don't know if it's his real name, but it's what he goes by. At least that's what Holly says. Not sure if he's going to want to help you or not, especially if you're trying to hurt his clientele, but that's who runs the place. Yeah. So do we get the sense that he is aware of the type of business that happens in his establishment? From what I understand, Jack don't care one thing or another about what you do as long as you've got silver. Okay. Well, this is turning out to be a bit of a bigger mess than I anticipated. Glad Galaxy. to be able to bring you You home. and me both. Your safety was definitely of, of importance to folks around you. That your, your troubles are not just your own. Turn to oh, yeah. Sweet Roots. Okay. After, you, you can respond to her first. No, it's fine. I'm just okay. going to be in flavor. Go ahead. Uh... I don't mean to impose, but do, do you have a room we can stay? <laughs> they kind of just like guffaw at Halfort. <laughs> and like, <laughs> at least turns them like, yeah, they've got rooms. They've got rooms. You are, your kids are gone. You've got rooms. Don't be. Don't be twats. And so like, ugh, they're kind of shamed into like letting you stay. But yeah, you've got, yeah, you can, you can crash here for the night. We've, we've got a visit in the morning and maybe we'll investigate the inn later. The calm and the wall? There's plenty of rooms at the calm and wall. Wait, oh, wait. you mean the Forsaken Inn? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so like in Comb, there's the Comb and Waddle Inn uh, where you could potentially have gotten rooms. You might even have had rooms or maybe maybe Ballin got you rooms there, but you know that he's back in Bree probably at the Prancing Pony. Uh, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you want to crash here, like you can impose on them and crash here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, fair enough. Uh, all um, right. So, so is there anything else you want to do? Because we are we're basically at time now. We're we're a little past our our end time. Okay. Take so some we'll warm food and take a, take sleep. You're just like like everything you guys do. Like every time these these sweet roots are just kind of looking at you with like these unbelievable. Yeah, he's just do? constantly like, I'm so sorry. Can I help at all? <laughs> like she's like just. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just like you could just see, like they're doing the right thing, but they they're not happy about having to do the right thing, you know. Like, and and Gilly can tell, and she just feels awful about it. Okay, all right. So we'll end it there then uh, for the night. Uh, You guys successful in your uh, in your rescue mission? You saved Private Ryan, and you uh, you heroically and looked cool doing it. Yeah, and brought her back uh, to uh, so it's full full night's rest. No one was wounded, right? Right. Uh, does right, anyone? No any, wounds, yeah. Who's down? Hope, by the way, because one of the things you can spend, you can remember, you can you can spend your fellowship points during a rest to restore to to gain a number of of hope points back that you can distribute however you want. I think what you have three fellowship points back, right? You have three yeah. fellowship points left. So if you wanted to burn them while you're resting. There's I'm definitely three. Always up for yeah. taking at least one. So there's yeah, three one. total hope points then that you all can take and distribute how you please. So one each. That yeah, sound. that sounds good. Okay. Yeah. So you can do that. Uh, long rest, and then you'll re- we'll reset fellowship points for the start of next session, so you'll be back to five to use again. Um, and we'll start up with you guys trying to figure out. Um, maybe we go to the Forsaken Inn. Maybe you figure out where these. Were these strange out of towners dressed like dressed like Bree folk? Uh, are, uh, are, are 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 what are they doing? Why are they hanging around? Maybe you'll look more into the the beard thing or whatever. Uh, so yeah, there's lots of things you could potentially do. Um, we'll kind of kind of go from there. Lore you can look into, etc. Mm-hmm. Uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll call it there. Uh, thank you for everybody who threw some bits at us tonight. We got a, I think we had a, we had one of those, uh, what are those things called? Hype trains hype train. going on earlier. Uh, so we definitely appreciate that. We have six of our re-rolls left, not re-rolls, excuse me. We have six of our bonus dice, uh, our audience purchase bonus dice left that you can use, uh, that we'll carry over till next week. Uh, and remember that, yeah, I think we're going to make that a final rule 
spend one to get a bonus die, spend five to get uh, to roll yeah. a favored. So I think that works out. Uh, awesome. Uh, thank you, Skizax. Definitely appreciate that. Um, we uh, well, I think we're playing next week. I think we're good. We're all good to go next Saturday. I think. Uh, yeah. If not, yeah. we'll 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 change some stuff. But we'll, that's our plan. Kind of look into this some more. Uh, Monday. So next time you'll see us is on Monday. We'll be playing Alien uh, in a couple days. You can catch me and Melissa in that game. Uh, I'll be over on Garblag Games, who popped by earlier. Uh, I'll be over on Garblag Games on Thursday, playing running a Delta Green game. Uh, we're playing through Visid. Think we're probably going to be finishing up actually next thir- next Thursday. Uh, Friday, I don't know what we're doing yet. We just uh, closed down part three of our Impossible Landscapes game. We might do like a one shot, something sort of off the wall, silly if we if we've got the energy for it. Uh, and then Saturday we'll be back for One Ring, so you can come back and see more of our adventure. Uh, but that's it for us. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and we're going to raid somebody. Uh, we'll see who's up. Dragons in the dining room. Uh, we're going to go ahead and raid them and play some dra- Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, so thank you for everyone who hung out. Follow the raid. Uh, come back next time. Like, subscribe, etc. Whatever it is that people do. I don't know. And if you're watching this later on YouTube, we really do appreciate you kind of checking us out there. If we caught us doing something horribly, egregiously wrong with the rules, please drop a note and uh, we'll, we'll get it fixed for next time. So uh, otherwise, good night, everybody. Bye-bye.